This is a Power 98.7 podcast. Now we're talking. Subscribe to Power 98.7 podcasts in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. There's more on power987.co.za. The People's Nighttime Parliament. Power Perspective with Denzel Taylor. 8 p.m. to midnight. It's nine minutes past 10 o'clock, power 98.7. the number to dial. Remember also 0833037093. And so many of you, so many of you engaging on Twitter. Remember, it is X and that is at Power FM 987. Show hashtag there is Power Perspective. Yeah, I was telling you who my next guest is, Takalani uh, Nechipale, and she's going to be joining us. Uh, and, of course, we're celebrating this particular month in March uh, as an important month, of course, uh, for all particular and intensive reasons. It is also International Women's Month, apart from having International Women's Day, the 8th of March, 2024, International Women's Day, and then uh, it is International Women's Month. So we don't, as a country, generally, you know, uh, in essence, celebrate um, the, the international perspective of it because we do have uh, the South African, uh, you know, aspect of it, and we do commemorate in August, uh, and that's where we do. Remember uh, uh, commemorating those 20,000 odd women who marched to the Union buildings uh, 9th of August, um, 1956. 1956, 9th of August, 1956. I'm just knocking my head here for the for that particular date to, to, to emerge. Yeah, t- about 20,000 women marching to the Union buildings, uh, 9th of August, 1956. And, of course, that's when we commemorate. But we do also, uh, in essence, commemorate International Women's Month. It is International Women's Month. And uh, there's an International Women's Day, the 8th of March. And so let's let's talk to Takalani uh, Nechipale then about, you know, um, her journey and where she is and how she feels about, you know, International Women's Month, uh, inter- uh, Women's Day, and then also all the other aspects that we throw at women in this country. Women don't have it easy in this country, you know. Uh, they struggle and they struggle and they struggle, and and then suddenly, you know, they are noticed. But why does it have to be the struggle first before they are noticed? Takalani, welcome to Power 98.7. Welcome to Power Perspective. How are you? Thank you very much for the welcome. I'm good. Thank you very much. Whoa, Takalani, you? you should be a radio host. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. I, will, I will definitely try it in my next yeah, life. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> not next life, not next life. <laughs> Apart from all the other stuff that you're doing at the moment, you know, there's a side gig, you know, like uh, Taka. You, can you imagine? Hi, my name is <laughs> Takalani and I am going to be, you know, with you for the next three hours. And w- if you were a radio yes. host, Takalani. <laughs> Yes. If you were a radio host, what would it be? Would you would you do you know politics? Would you do uh, color color radio? When I say color, would it be sort of like lunchtime radio? You know, talk about celebrities and 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 you know children and and all sorts of things. Or would it be the economy? What 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 slot would you find yourself in if you chose to be a radio host? I would definitely find a slot. And let's say you're 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. talking yeah. about... Oh, you like that. You like topic. that, right? I do. Yeah, um, I know people are tired from yeah. their work. Yeah. And they're I driving home. People, and they're driving home. And look at you choosing prime time. Like, look at you choosing prime spot. I mean, just like that. You're just, I'll just grab prime time. You know? yes. Do you know how hard <laughs> people work to get prime time? Me, Mina, I'm just here in the night. You yes, know, I'm just yes. broadcasting in the night. Other people get breakfast and drive and lunch and yes. whatever. And then Denzel Taylor, yeah, got 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 night radio. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would definitely appreciate the the prime time. I think mm-hmm. because we 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 come home so tired from work every yeah. single day. Yeah. But we are we do have a bit of a space in our minds yeah. to think of a topic that we can take home yeah. and discuss with our families over dinner to say, Hey, you know, Takalani on the on the news is discussing mm-hmm. um having us wear pink mm. overalls or PPE. What do you yeah. think about that? So yeah. just Dropping controversial topics and letting letting it simmer in their minds, and then mm. letting that be um, the center of the topic in the next day, mm. is the reason why I would pick prime time. Yeah, and then you're gonna have and then you're gonna have men phone in and say, Ah, Mantakalani, pink, 
you know, couldn't you choose blue, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but men love pink. I was, I was actually, uh, I went to, uh, I hosted an outreach um, event mm-hmm. the other day in Peter Marisburg at Rachel yeah. Turk Secondary School. Yeah. And the boys were so happy mm-hmm. to get the pink hot hats, which we thought were apparently going to be for the ladies. Yeah. But they wanted it and they said, no. Pink is just a color. Mm. But then they don't see the whole bias of pink being for girls yeah. and blue being for boys. Let me let me tell you, Takalani, I, I wear sweaters, right? And I'm in jeans and I'm kind of like, you know, a, a tacky kind of guy, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm into I'm into that kind of that that's my kind of thing, you know. Just just bordering on Pansula, you know, like I'm 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 stylish, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So so yeah so I'm I'm kind of there jeans sweater and 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 uh sort of um uh the the tacky the tacky vibe and yes. and I have to admit to you talking about pink that uh I have white a lot of white shirts a lot of blue shirts light blue shirts and I have uh, I think two two pink shirts Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Mm. No, we should we should definitely get you more. I mean, kind of old <laughs> shades of pink. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it. I, no, 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 no. And and fashion. yeah, no, no. I wouldn't go pink pants though. <laughs> I wouldn't go pink pants though, Takalani. I, I'm, I, there's a place where I draw the line. It's at the belt. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go pink no, pants. I do, I do understand. Takalani, let's talk about you. Yes. Yeah. Who is Takalani? Who's who's so, who's who's at outreach events and and all of these things? Who is Takalani? So Takalani Nechipale yeah. is is a young female female civil engineer. Yeah, and she's from Pretoria. Yeah, born and raised in Pretoria, yeah. and has worked in different industries. I've worked in the consulting space. I've worked in construction. Yeah. And I'm currently working in a project management space in the public sector. Yeah. I'm currently working for. Guazulu Natal Department of Health. Mm. And she is a civil engineer with seven seven years of experience. Yeah. And all she does is try and break boundaries wherever she goes. I oh. think that's just my headline. And the reason why I, yeah. I had to put that out there is because us as as women, we sometimes get into workplaces mm. and we we don't know how to stand out or we mm. want to conform and we don't yeah. fit in. Sure. So I've been known to get in, you know, you you get to understand what's ha- what's happening, and then you mm-hmm. just set a standard for yourself, sure, and you exceed it in the different spaces that I'm in. Okay, but more so, I am an advocate for women and girls in STEM. So I'm a I'm a big advocate for young girls pursuing math and science to pursue careers in STEM. So STEM is your science, technology, yeah. engineering, and mathematics. Mm. And and the reason why we do this is when I chose civil engineering, I, I honestly chose it because someone said, oh, yeah, they do a bit of sketching and there's a bit of calculations and there should be money on the other side. Um, but I didn't really have any role models to yeah. look up to um, that I could say I want to be a civil engineer because of that person. Mm. And I realized that the young girls of today are still scared mm. of taking such career opportunities because they are aware that they're male dominated yeah. or they are a bit scary or they're a bit too hard. And mm. I'm here to say, no, it's not hard. Mm. We are here for you and we are here to support you. And sure. that's just been the journey of my entire life. Okay. Let's, let's, let, me, let me just understand a few things. Uh, when you say different industries, that's as a civil engineer, right? Uh, the yeah. different in- industries that you've been working on. Because when you started naming them, it just sounded like the construction industry and, and the engineering space anyway. So, so as, as a civil engineer in those different industries then? Yes. Why, was so, it? Okay, cool. Carry on. No, no, you are. Okay. Sure. Well, then, then, you know, happily, happily engaged there, living in Pretoria, you know, get your best life and all of those kind of things. And then KZN happens. How, how does KZN happen? Is it, is it suddenly a job opportunity that comes around uh, a big company that suddenly, you know, needs, needs people? Was it a career move? You know, what, 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 what makes you, I'm trying to understand what, what is it then that drives a civil engineer who's engaged in all of these different industries and then says, let me, let me go check out KZN. What, what, what was it that drove you down there? Um, it has to be fate, if I'm okay. being honest. Yeah. Um, I, I've had a very interesting career journey. So mm. I started out in um, your semi-construction and design office. Mm. 
And I felt like, you know, I am learning something, but you feel like when you're engaging with the ground, mm. like literally wearing PPE and, and hard hats and boots, mm. that you mm. learn more. So mm. I jumped into construction and, and that was that was quite tough, but it was it was exciting um, because you get to learn on your feet. Mm. However, the COVID-19 pandemic happened mm. and like me, many of us lost our jobs and we were forced mm. to try and find alternatives. Okay. I didn't pursue were, were you, my were you, were, Okay, were you one of those who, you said lots of us lost our jobs. Were you one of those? Yes, okay. I was one of those. Yes. Okay. Yes. So unfortunately... Um, you, I always say you can't build a bridge from home. So most build of a bridge, look at you. Mm. Yes. And then from there on, um, funny story, mm. I, I then went into marketing. And yeah. I said, you know, I'm going to try something different. And people might feel like doing something that's not within your immediate career journey is a waste of time. Mm. For me, I learned how to build my confidence, how to build my brand, mm. how to speak to people. And, and that was quite big. Um, thereafter, I was able to market myself and I got another opportunity mm. on site. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I was having a discussion with my with my my father the one time mm. and I got an invite for an interview in KZN and yeah. I told him, it's too far. Yeah. How am I going to get there? And he said, look, I will make sure that I pay for all your travel fees. Okay. Go. This is your job. Mm. And, and I went. And it's it's interesting to apply for. Was a it was it a happened. kind of a promotional job or something that you kind of were doing, and it was just to get back into the civil engineering space? It was actually a promotional job. Oh, right, cool. Um, so I was working as a candidate civil engineer, but mm. what we do is we manage projects yeah. and we implement infrastructure and facilities for hospitals and clinics in the whole province. Mm. So that's that's quite big for in me. In the whole um, province. In the whole province. Those budgets yeah. must be big. They definitely are. Yeah. They definitely are. And, and, and that's why it, it's such a requirement to have such a department um, within the KZN space. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, it was definitely a promotional move for me. Mm. I, I moved closer to the beach and <laughs> I was living my best life. I definitely am still living my best life. Yeah. Yes. No return. No, well, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> you, you, you just worried that the department's also listening to you at the moment going, <laughs> okay, okay, I mean, when's HR getting that letter? Okay, yeah, very, very diplomatic answer there, you know, on, 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 on point. Just let's talk about when you, when you start t- talking about, you know, um, uh, uh, young young women who are in 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 essence still deciding what kind of career they need to to look at and and in a lot of cases like you said they they still scared because you know uh, in essence it's male dominated it's hard maybe even you know the the, the kind of fashion design for women in the industry you know mm-hmm. uh, is is not um I'm not sure whether they 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 design those those particular helmets differently for women, and so it's you know it it's better looking you know, but still does the same job. But 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 on a serious note, then young young women getting into that particular space, you you've just pointed out to me that it's it's tough, and people also make preferential choices based on their biases, based on also the kind of, you know, historical content that we've been through in this country where, where, where you know, there are limitations for women in that career space. Have we broken that particular, you know, ceiling or, you know, for, for civil engineering? Because I do find that, you know, I'm, I'm seeing quite a few civil engineers who are women and who are engaging in this particular space. So, Women have begun to take to it and, and, and not, not in a way that says, oh, I'm trying it out. They, they actually love it and want to do it, in essence. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, from my honest opinion, yeah. I feel like we haven't fully broken the ceiling. Yeah, okay. and, and the reason why I'm saying that is we still have some of our employers that might not see women um, at the same level as men. So yeah. There's a statement that one person once told me, and it might shake up a few uh, people's hearts at the moment, but yeah. it's, it's my honest opinion, yeah. where it was said that um, in the industry, most women are employed based on their qualifications and, um, and everything they bring to the table. However, men are employed based on their potential. 
Yeah. And we still find that in today's time. Let me, However, let me, hold on, Takalani, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need just to interrogate this a little bit so I think I understand it. You know, yes. is it is it a question and an industry where people make choices based on the physicality of the job? Because, you know, um, civil engineers are not lifting heavy, heavy pavements and, and you know, those pavement bricks and... and, and mm-hmm pouring tar and doing all of those things. I have a friend, uh, you know, who, who's an engineer and, and used to work for, for power construction. He's now, he's now engaged in building roads in the Southern African space, you know, and, and, and Zambia and in all of these other countries. And, and um, he, he's, not, he, he's not of the physical, you know, in, in the physical sense, somebody who's, who's masculine and big and, 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 you know, that you would say, oh, you know, that is the differentiating factor. When you say there is still that judgment call on women and men in that particular space, when, f- when the physical aspect of it is gone, what is the criteria then that, that is being used to hold women back? If not, it's hard and it's long and it's, and it's physical and, you know, things are heavy. If not that, then what, what is that barrier that's still there? Um. So there are a few elements that would form what I call the unconscious bias yeah. that certain employers would have. So first of all, it would be that um, they're probably not used to employing a lot more women in the industry. So mm. they then feel that they're still comfortable with employing men over women. So mm. there's that unconscious bias and it happens in interviews and um, in certain classrooms. Mm. Then the second leg of it is to say, okay, we do understand that women can equally do the job as mm. men. Yeah. Um, and I've heard from other people's experiences is that, but okay, she will have to get married one day, she'll mm. bear kids, mm. and she might not necessarily be um, able to be fully available at work. Mm. And, and then the other leg is because she's a female, she might mostly not be able to handle the job. Should we still risk it or not? Should we employ a male? So those are some of the, some of the stories that have come out from different people's perspectives. And, and okay. this is not just from male employers. Mm-hmm. It's also coming from female employers. It's also coming from our peers. Um, it's also coming from us within. Sometimes our imposter syndrome creeps up so badly that mm-hmm. we intentionally hide ourselves because we feel, okay, because I'm not a woman, mm-hmm. I probably shouldn't stand out that much. Okay, so you know, so 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 you said not only from men, from women, and 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 other as well. Let me ask you: when women break through that ceiling, like like you, and and begin to show that you can do it, if not the same, but maybe better, uh, do, you know, do you find that women are engaging actively? actively that they begin to lure other women and i use that sentence i use that particular word you know uh, just yes. just for in, you know for for the for the for the sake of the sentence now to lure other women into the industry and also engage in educational aspects of, around these particular things that they might not think the careers for them but actually you know it it pretty much is are you finding that women in the industry are supportive of other women in the industry because a lot of narratives sometimes are, point, uh, uh, are pointed at women themselves who, when they do make it into a very niche industry, you know, yes. feel the comfortness of that industry, love the the space that they in, love the aspect that they are the individuality of being. I am the only woman here. And then don't engage actively in trying to lure other women in. Is that a real, real, you know, concept? Is it a real thing? From my experience, the women are at the forefront of actually um, bringing all the women into the industry. Brilliant, and yeah. and it's amazing to see. Like I said, when I was so this up, other thing about this much, other thing about funny. women being blocking in the in, in in spaces of career, really just you know created by men, I suppose. Um, it's it's also created by um, the attitude that they were employed in. So you, okay. you do find women that em- that were employed in a masculine environment, and they might feel that that's how you get 
your job. That's how you get your promotion. Mm. Um, whereas then we come with a softer side to say, but as women, we need to understand each other's needs. Mm. We need to understand where we can boost each other. We need to start mentoring girls, um, not just from varsity, but from high school all mm. the way to university, all the way to to working. Um, mm. So there's a there's, an, there's a, a platform through the Women in the Build Environment, which mm. is which is an initiative by SAISI, the yeah. South African Institution of Civil Engineering. Yeah. And what they tend to do is they want to take all the graduates and all the women and women in, that are in the built environment, not just civil engineers, and groom yeah. them and support them and show them that you're not alone. Mm. We're here to support you. Yeah. No matter what you're hearing, no matter the bias that you bump into, this is how you can navigate or this is how we can support you. Mm. So, so yeah, I, I've, I've, I've seen quite a number of extensive initiatives that are coming through, and I feel like we are definitely on the right path mm. to overcome that unconscious, um, Takalani, unconscious bias. Takalani, are there, are there enough stories? And, and I... Yeah. I, I I sometimes I sometimes play devil's advocate with 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 an interview like this because, mm-hmm. um, and I, and I'll tell you why I'm saying that is, you know sometimes I find that the more we write and we talk about how unique a woman is in a particular space, and then I'm thinking that alone alone begins to create a narrative within that concept of that conversation of that, oh, wow, it was an achievement, you know, mm-hmm. that, that somebody did something special to, to, to suddenly be in a, in a, in a space that phew, is, is, a, is a general one, you know, that you didn't do anything more, you know, unique or marvelous and or special than the, than the male who, who landed up in the position. And, and sometimes I think... Is it a problem when we pay too much attention to a woman being in the job instead of just getting ahead with it and doing what we need to do to get women into it? And then we, or, or, or do we need to celebrate every little victory uh, that when, when women do attain the positions and women do get into these niche, you know, um, uh, uh, markets and, and, and places that we do need to celebrate it? Because sometimes with the devil's advocate component of it is the, 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 the suggestion that by suggesting that a woman got into it, oh, wow, you know, Takalani, you're a civil engineer. And then I'm, I'm gasping like, it it almost means like I I can't believe it. I'm shocked that you're you know a civil engineer and that mm-hmm. you 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 you've achieved something that you know is over and beyond what 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 you should have achieved because here you are in in a male space. What what do you say to that particular devil's advocate you know scenario? For me, the fact that we're breaking those boundaries, we're yeah. employing more women already is an achievement. So I, I've I've had this discussion. Um, where there are a few males that say, oh, yeah, but, you know, we're also here, we're males, we're looking for jobs, but we're only celebrating women. Yeah. Um, it's key to, to understand that women were underprivileged in this mm. case. Mm. It's, a, it's a male-dominated space, or it mm. was a male-dominated space. Yeah. So when there is a change, it means that we're opening up the doors for diversity. Mm. And, and in opening the doors for diversity, it's not to say just because we're bringing women into the space, yeah. we're only celebrating it for that reason. Yeah, yeah. But we're celebrating the fact that we're actually opening up an opportunity but sometimes, to change. But sometimes, Takalani, you know, honestly, we do celebrate it for the wrong reason, that other reason that you say, because when we put out our press statements, sometimes you'll see companies saying, and we have three women also, you know, in the industry, as though as though that almost is an achievement that they've reached, you know, where whereby yeah. um, it, it should be a natural process where you should just engage women and men equally in that particular industry. Yes, you see, that's true. However, um, if you do look at history, mm. because there weren't that many women, yeah, a lot of yeah. the women were not in the work, in the workforce at mm. all. And now they're coming into the workforce and they mm. actually are given an opportunity to lead. It's definitely a big milestone to yeah. celebrate. So it might, it might seem minute, it might seem small, but if you look at the history of it and you look at how many women are employed mm. um, in higher positions, yeah. it actually does show that we're making a very big difference. So you're saying the more, the more we shine the spotlight on it, the better because it, it, other people see it, other people engage it, other people notice, and other people then go and do the same also. Yes, 
and it also motivates the young girl to yeah. actually pursue that career. because they see somebody like them in in an yes. industry that they didn't think was potentially possible yes. so 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 now we we we're through the ceiling like you are you you're a civil engineer you you've got the job KZN department of health uh, you know, it's privileged to have you, project manager down there, working with big budgets. There you are, uh, and 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 the the you know the 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 spotlight is on you, and you're in the workforce, and you are excel, and you are doing what other men are doing, and if not better, yes. you're in there. Do you then yes. find? Do you then find within that particular space that the acceleration of progress is equal? Because it's one thing getting into the door. And being there and being counted in the numbers, but yeah. but if the language has started differently in the beginning to get you into the door, doesn't that particular same language continue when we talk about accelerating now those particular women that we have inside of the building? Is that also then on an equal basis, or do we have to have also those tough conversations there? We also do need to have those tough conversations about accelerating, yeah. um, mainly because um, they will see you entering the workplace and they will feel that you are probably the assistant or the help, <laughs> whereas you're yeah. actually as good of a project engineer yeah. as the rest of the team. Um, what I've seen also works is never mind our female employers pushing us, but mm. I've had amazing male employers that have pushed me mm. in the forefront to say, no, I want her to represent my team. I want mm. her to push the specific agenda mm. to then put a, high, a limelight on us and say, look, just because she's a female, she's not here to help only. Mm. She's also as equally important as everyone else. Mm. It is quite challenging to navigate through it. And then yeah. and, and I'll, I'll be honest, you know, I'm, I'm a, I think I'm the only female engineer in the space that I'm working in, and I've got a few interns that are female as well. Yeah. And they do see that it becomes a challenge. Mm. But there are some male counterparts that also assist in putting us on the map mm. and also me showing them that, look, doesn't mean if I'm the only one here that my voice is not going to be heard. Mm. So there still is a bit of resistance once you are in the workplace. Mm. And this is why there are these initiatives that are still running for those that are still employed, that are graduates, mm. that are even experts in the industry to say, we're here to support you mm. and guide you on how you can navigate through all these, these biases that can be there at different levels. Mm. I mean, there's, there's a comment that once came in and, 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 I, and I can see that the narrative is changing, mm. but they would always say the female leaders are probably the HR leaders. Mm, and mm, you're mm. just sitting there and you're saying, yeah, but <laughs> we want the executives to be female. We don't yeah. only want it to be HR. We don't want it mm. to just be um, mm. the jobs that are HR and marketing. soft mm. skill management. Yes, we mm. want the, the technical leaders to also be in that space. And and that's still in the process and in the progress. And look, there's amazing news that are, are, that are coming out of the initiatives that SICE is doing. Mm. But we're definitely on the right path. Sure. So, so in the beginning, you were talking about those particular, uh, you know, um, uh, conversation pieces that might land up in the boardrooms where they say, uh, you know, uh, um, she might fall pregnant, you know, she might get married, uh, you know, she, all of those particular things that that we that 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 then you know become applicable uh, in those particular conversations. Then, let's let's because those those. It's just hard getting past those conversations in the first place. Let's let's yeah. go to the hardness of of civil engineering, and let's go and start at the schools and and that particular place. Um, how key is it that uh, young 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 students are beginning to understand the whole issue of maths and science, and and that some of these particular career paths, you know, are not are not able to be you know to be entered into or to be achieved if you're not doing the maths and science and we do see within the system sometimes there is this particular aspect where you know it's easy to do to to drop maths and science it's the first thing to do as soon as we're struggling and that some teachers mm -hmm. sometimes when they're looking at results and wanting better you know better uh you know uh, results through the matric system uh you know Im Im implore on 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 these young uh you know young boys and girls to drop the maths and science or to go to standard grade or other whatever you know the qualifications are just to get you through the matric process uh 
but 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 then you 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 have the limitations then how important is it then and and i'm going to ask you then just to address that the difficulty then of getting the maths and science and and achieving at that level and then also i also just want you uh, takalani then to speak about getting the degree and you know how how hard that is not not all degrees are equal in nature some some are pretty complex and some are pretty hard and some are you know um are pretty hard to 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 manage as well so just give us a journey of of you know the hard work that people need to put in in the beginning stages already to get to a place where you can say I'm a civil engineer okay so I am currently the the CIC star champion. So CIC star is your success through academic readiness. Right. And what our community does is we go out into schools and speak to to young girls and boys to pursue math and science. So the challenges that come in is that when you do not have math and science, it closes so many doors to other careers in STEM. So for example, when you look at civil engineering and qualifying for civil engineering at a university, like your University of Pretoria um, or University of Cape Town, you need about 70% minimum mm. for math, 70% for science. Mm. And then if you want to qualify for University of Technology, it drops down then to your 60% mm. and some of the institutions drop down to 50%. Yeah. So you can already see that you need to have high marks. Yeah. And the challenge now comes in when they don't have role models that can show them that you actually mm. need math and science for not just your immediate reach. Yeah. So I'll make yeah. an example. You've got a, a student that's passionate about, um, you know, let's say playing the guitar. You know, mm. I'm not picking on anyone. Mm. They're playing a guitar and they do understand that they might not need math and science mm. to actually be a famous guitarist. Mm. However... We found that people in their 20s and 30s, um, they, they reach the ceiling where they expand themselves and want to study an additional qualification. But mm. because they don't have math and science, it limits them. There you go. Mm. And, and, and that's the biggest factor that I keep on preaching when I do go to schools to say math and science helps open any door. And mm. in fact, every single door. So if you sacrifice your grade 10, 11, 12 mm. to make sure that you qualify for your maths and science, you can achieve so much more, even beyond your immediate reach. Mm. And and to do that, you do need teachers that are passionate about um, getting the scholars through. You do need to get tutors. You need to get assistance. Mm. Um, so when we also do these outreach programs, we talk about um, a platform called Can Academy. Mm. We talk about stimulators, just just to stimulate the scholars' minds to say, look, there's so many things you can do, mm. but what you need to do is focus on maths and science and your English subjects as mm. well mm. to be able to qualify for university, and that is quite key. Mm. And then going into university and yeah. qualifying or, or graduating from your civil engineering degree, that's a different ball game. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a different ball game. Um, from my experience, what I've seen is it's the same mentality that I had in in high school. It's mm. to keep on pushing. So I was told, look, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Mm. And if you can't do it, then get assistance. Mm. So where I was able to, I reached out to friends. I reached out to tutors. I reached out to the kids that sit in the front. Mm. So the, the, the kids that sit I in like the that. Front. I reached out to the kids who sit in the front. I like that. <laughs> I'm I'm being honest mm. because I also used to sit at the back at some point and yeah. I said no, but the guys that sit in the front are the ones that finish their their tests and exams first. Yeah. So let me reach out to them. So you have to exert yourself mm. um, to speaking. And there's a reason they sit in the front because they want to be visible to the teacher. They 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 they, they don't want to be hiding in the back or you know whatever in the shadows. They want to be visible. They 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 almost like choose me because I know my stuff. You know. Yes. Mm. Or I also want to know more. Yeah, yeah, um, true. Because you get easily distracted in the back. Yeah. Um, but I, I overexerted myself in, in growing a community of different types of people. And when one thing you need to learn from one year to another mm. is you might not graduate, you might not pass with your friend. Yeah. So some of your friends might fall behind for whatever reasons. Um, we all have different circumstances. Mm. Some are not able to pay for their fees. Some have to relocate. Mm. Some have to downgrade um, because they feel that they might not be able to continue with the course. Mm. 
Mm. However, you still need to continue making communities and friends. Mm. I can honestly say that I've got a group of friends, and if I could write all their names on my piece of degree um, paper, I definitely would, um, because it, it's what actually helps you push through. Mm. It's, it's all about the mentality. Sure. Okay. Just, just on 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 the the sort of, uh, and I'll ask you now your experiences in government and your experiences in the uh, the private industry. What is the biggest biggest uh, differentiator there? Uh, and 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 let me let me just put give 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 a rider to it. For example, uh, you know the, the 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 corporate industry and the private space is always seen to be you know well. The, 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 that's where the work's done. That's where we build the real things. And then the guys in government, you know, um, are, are the guys. Well, you know, they 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 have lunch breaks, and you know, they 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 sit on their phone a little longer because you know it's it's government, and there are budgets there, and when we need to make money here, and we on deadlines and all of that kind of stuff. What 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 is your experience? You've been in both. What what because you you can now. You know, here's an opportunity to tell us. You know what? You work your butt off in government as well. It, there's, <laughs> yes. there's, there's, there's no sitting on your laurels here. Yes. So, from my experience, the biggest difference between government and public sector, mm. um, it has to be with the budgets and mm. the funds that you're working with. So, when you look at what we do in government, we, for example, have to build a hospital or have to extend a clinic. That's mm. quite a lot of money. Yeah. And there are many moving parts. Mm. It's not money that you can easily withdraw from the bank. It's sitting at treasury somewhere. Mm. You need to get approval for it. Mm. So it's not that people are sitting on their phones and they're just waiting for something to happen. Mm. There are quite a number of procedures in place mm. before you can access funds, before you can implement a project. Mm. And, and those procedures are in place to protect taxpayers' money mm. so that other people don't get access to it or abuse it. Mm. On the other hand, in the public sector, I'm not saying that their money is small, but yeah. the money that they will receive is based on the effort that they put in. Yeah, yeah. So they're aware that if they don't work tonight and tomorrow night, they, will, they won't be able to, to tender for a project mm. or they won't be able to meet a deadline and then that means it will affect their cash flow. Mm. So that's, that's number one. Then the second level is as well, um, as I've mentioned, the workforce. So in smaller companies or in the public sector, uh, in the private sector, mm. you you have your immediate HR, you've got your immediate finance people, um, and everything is somewhat within your reach. Mm. But when it comes to government, because it's such a big department, mm. you're working with multiple people that are not only serving you. Mm. So so we've got a department that, that, that's serving the whole of the health industry. So it's not just infrastructure. They're serving those that have to procure medicine that have to attend to the emergency services and so on mm. and so mm. forth. So you start seeing that there's a lot of people that, that they're dealing with and therefore things might take longer. However, it's for the purpose of, as I've mentioned, to make sure that procedures are in place to secure taxpayers' money. Sure. And lastly, the mandate is, is much bigger when you're working in government. So the mandate is not to just build hospitals, you know. It's, it's, to, it's to grow the economy, to, 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 to fight diseases, to reduce mm. morbid, uh, morbidity and, and the death toll rate. Mm. Um, and unlike in the, in the private sector, their goal is to either have a specific margin for profit yeah, or yeah. as well to, to achieve a specific goal within that company, mm. um, which, is, which is not as nationally um, placed as a government department. Sure. So those are the biggest differences that I, I can mention at the moment. Let me let me ask you a question about medicine. So 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 many graduates in that particular industry and if you if you just look at social media and reports and whatever uh, sitting sitting at home and and you know uh, graduates will blame government and talk to government and the unions are all over the space as well and saying how can you train individuals fund them and all of that and then when they graduate uh, you know there's there's just not enough positions for them and whatever and it's it's the sad sad scenario of I can't, I can't fathom it in a sense where a country like mm -hmm. South Africa needs medical people, needs, you know, doctors and, and in rural areas everywhere, just, just the kind of populace that we are. 
We need the speciality of medicine. And here are young graduates saying, I can't get a job. I can't get into the industry. Uh, there's, mm-hmm. there's just no positions. When, when, when engineering is concerned, let, let's just take the civil away. Just, just engineering is concerned. Are we finding that people have also gone through the process? And having graduated in the varying, varying engineering, you know, uh, uh, spheres, whether it be, uh, you know, um, uh, engin- civil engineering or, or, you know, electrical engineering and or other. Uh, do, do you, are you finding also that people are entering the space, but there's a problem with the uptake sometimes uh, that you, you find young engineers who have got the graduation but just can't find a job because maybe it's the economy and or you know budgets are shrinking and look what happened in covid you know and 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 companies are letting people go what what's your experience um you're correct Enzo. it's actually a combination of of everything including mm. the economy um so I, I think i fall part of the the first batch of engineers that might have struggled to get a job in the beginning yeah what happens is that we we've got we've got a smart generation that's coming up and, and graduating, and they need to be then placed on projects, yeah. and those projects are then developed by the public sector. So if the public sector is not able to produce more projects based on um, lack of funding for specific developments or delayed funding for specific developments, that means that the private sector will then not have projects and therefore will struggle to employ our engineers. Mm. So, so that's been the chain that I've noticed um, happening, especially in South Africa regarding engineering. Mm. What, what's next for you, uh, Takalani? Just, just you know, on the on the on the uh, you know career space. What, what you know, where where is it that you eventually you know want to see yourself? Uh, in essence, you know, your own your own construction company, your own you know your own business, your your own uh, uh, you know carved out path that that maybe you own and and move out of 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 you know. Um, uh, the 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 working for somebody space. What 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 is what is it ultimately that you Takalani? Because you said in the beginning, you know, um, you you're a busy body. You you get in and you shake things up. So uh, wh- where do you actually, or do you, are you are you just so involved with what you're doing at the moment that you you're not thinking ahead to, you know, the the next plan you might have? Um, no, I'm definitely thinking ahead. Yeah. Um, I will definitely continue shaking all the spaces that I'm in yeah. and I'm actually looking forward to, to being more of a specialist in a yeah. specific technical field. Yeah. I can't specify it at the moment. Um, but the specialist that I, I'm seeing is someone that will travel the world yeah. that will be internationally known, um, not only for advocating for, for young girls in STEM, but also having the technical skills in a, spe- a specific speciality, mm. primarily in project management within engineering. Mm. So that's where I see myself. Um, so one day you'll catch me in an interview <laughs> somewhere in the USA, yeah. and I'll, I'll definitely remind you. Of I'll be like, that's interview. Takalani, man. <laughs> you know, Takalani, you're talking about specialization, right? And and I didn't know it for for you know for a lot of people an engineer is an engineer is an engineer right you build roads and if you're not building roads you're building bridges and if you're not building bridges you 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 you're doing something right you're building malls or or whatever it is and then I actually found out with with conversations with with my own friend who's in the engineering space that um, there's there's actually so much speciality that goes on in that particular space that there's actually an engineer that would sit down and just do budgets and work out projects and 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 budget projects uh, and and yeah. and and put those through you know and say well this is the next you know project and he he works out the budget and says this is this this is this this is this and he doesn't touch a brick or anything but he's an engineer i you know yeah. and 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 that's the speciality in the industry yeah yes yeah there's there's quite a few actually um, um I think when I started working as well, I was, I was surprised at your your programming your, or your project planner yeah. engineers, and I said, exactly. "What? Yeah. They don't they don't touch a record. They anything? don't touch nothing. Nothing. Yeah, and they you don't get those. Yeah, th- th- that it works with paper and computers. Yeah, yeah. We've got some special um, engineers that come and install your X-ray machine. Yeah. Um, in hospitals, and you're wondering. I thought we do this in house. He's like, "No, no, no, no. <laughs> it's a special engineer that does this." 
Yeah. Um, so I think that's the key with, with every single engineer. You can yeah. be a multidisciplinary uh, yeah. engineer. However, with with each and every single person having their own passion and their mm. dreams, you eventually forge a speciality within your yeah. space. And you can have more than one, and you can also be able to, to succeed in different industries at the same time. Takalani, I'm going to say thank you so much. I'm going to watch what you're doing. Uh, Takalani, next, you. next time when you're up in Joburg, right, you, um, find out where the Power 98.7 studios are. Ask anybody in Gauteng, where, where are the Power 98.7 studios? <laughs> and they'll say, you know what, there, they know, they know where they are. They know where they are. Pop in and come and say hi. Thank you very much. I will definitely do so very soon. Takalani, thank you so much for joining us on Power Perspective. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for hosting me. I hope those that are listening are enlightened and empowered by today's session. Absolutely. Takalani uh, Nechipale talking to us there, all the way from KZN, civil engineer, uh, project manager, about how she got into it and the various you know, up and downs and the struggles that women also have within this particular industry. And we were talking to all of those as well. What a lovely uh, uh, in, uh, person. And also then, Takalani, well, you know what? Um, um, if if you want to do the radio space, you know I I think you've I think you've got that too. You can corner that as well. You've been listening to a Power ninety eight point seven podcast. For more podcasts, visit power nine eight seven dot co dot za or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.